welcome back, math friends. So today we are going to continue what we started working on yesterday. So that is, of course, two digit plus two digit addition with regrouping. So we have two videos today that we're going to watch together, and then I'm going to teach you a game that you can either do by yourself in your math notebook, or if there's somebody at your house that's available to play the game with you, then I will show you how you can play it against somebody to see who the winner is. So let's go ahead and get started with our first video. Hi kids. Today we are going to use our addition skills to learn more about place value. We will use place value to help us solve our story problems. Let's take a look over here and see what problems we have to solve. There are two classes in the second grade. Mrs. Jenkins' class has 32 students, and Mr. Smith's class has 27 students. We need to find out how many students are in the second grade. What do I need to do to find out how many students there are in all? We need to add these numbers together. So we are going to add 32 plus 27. We have double digit numbers here, and a really cool way to add these together is to use our knowledge of place value. Let's set up these numbers differently so we can see the place value for each number. Now to make sure we have the numbers in the correct spot, let's look at each number. If we look at the 32, we can see that the 3 is in the 10's place and the 2 is in the 1's place. Looking at the 27, we can see that the 2 is in the 10's place and the 7 is in the 1's place. So do we have them lined up correctly? Great! We do have them lined up correctly. And now we can use some base 10 blocks to help us add them together. So to get 32, we need 10, 20, 30. Now, I have the 3 in the 10's place, but I still need the blocks for the 1's place, so I need 2 of the 1's blocks. Now on to the 27. We need to get 27 blocks, and we need to start in the 10's place. So here is 10, 20. Now in the 1's place, I need 7 of the 1's blocks, so I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We can now add these two groups together, but to do this we need to be careful and stay within our place value. This means that we should not add the tens blocks with the ones blocks. So we are going to join all our tens place together, and then we will join all of our ones place together. Now that they are joined together, or added together, we can now start counting them. Let's count the ones first. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now let's count the tens we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So as we can see here, we have 9 ones and 5 tens. If you look at the math problem over here, you will see that 2 plus 7 is 9, and 3 plus 2 is 5. Isn't that really cool? Now let's look at a different problem. In this problem, we have 47 plus 29. Let's represent these numbers using our base 10 blocks. To get 47, how many 10 blocks do we need? How many 1's blocks do we need? If you set 4 10's and 7 1's, you are correct. We need 4 10's blocks and 7 1's blocks. Now to represent the number 29, how many 10's blocks do we need? How many 1's blocks? We need 2 10's blocks and 9 1's blocks. Now we do the same as before and put all of our tens together and all of our ones together. Let's start by adding our ones together. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we need to stop here and remember what we learned about regrouping. We now have 10 ones, which is the same as one of our 10 blocks. We need to trade these in for a tens block. Remember, we can do this because 10 ones are the same as one of these 10 blocks. Let's start over and count our ones again. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we put the number 6 down here under the 1. Now we can count our 10s. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. We can put the number 7 under the 10th place. 47 plus 29 should equal 76. We can double check our work by looking at it the way we did before. If we look at the problem, we see that 7 plus 9 is 6. 
Wait, is that correct? No, 7 plus 9 is 16. But do you remember what we had to do when we counted out the 10 ones? We used our regrouping skills and traded the 10 ones for one of the blocks of 10. So we need to look at our 10 spots and put a 1 right here because we have to trade the 1s for 1 10. So if we add the 10s column, we get 1 plus 4 plus 2. What does that equal? It equals 7. So 47 plus 29 equals 76. Great job! You guys are awesome! Remember that you will get better at this when you practice. So keep on practicing, keep learning, and we will see you next time. Okay, friends. Thank you for watching. And so the next video I want to share with you is one with Annie and Moby.
line up the ones and the tens column. If you don't line them up properly, you'll get the wrong answer. First, add up the ones column. What is nine plus five? It's fourteen, which is the same as one ten and four ones. So put the four in the ones column. Then carry one ten to the tens column. I like to write it above. Then add the tens column. One plus one is equal to two. So nineteen plus five is equal to twenty-four. What is fifty-four plus seven? Add the ones column first. I know that seven plus four is equal to eleven. So I put one in the ones place, then I carry one over to the tens place. Then I add the tens column. I know that five plus one is equal to six. So fifty-four plus seven is equal to sixty-one. I'm exhausted from all this exercising, Moby. Aren't you tired? Apparently robots don't get tired. Okay, so down below you have a link that you can click on to get this page called Two Digit Edition Spinners and you're going to want to print that out. And then let me share with you how to do our activity. So if you're by yourself and don't have somebody around, it's totally fine. You can just record your answers in your math notebook. And you'll see I have mine ready to go. This game is called Spin and Solve, and you need to do at least six different problems, okay? So this first part that I'm going to show you works the same whether you're playing it by yourself or if you're playing against someone, okay? The only thing that's different is you need to decide who goes first if you are playing against someone. And the best way, the most fair way, is always rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right, so see who goes first. Then you have a paper clip, something to write with, and this is going to be your spinner. So you spin on the first. That was lame. Let me try again. There we go. And it's about 23. So I'm going to write that down in my math notebook. And then I'm going to spin over here to get the second number that I need to add. Okay, and it looks like it's a liner, a little bit closer maybe to 39. And then I'm going to use that regrouping practice skill that I know. Three ones plus nine ones, that is 12. But I cannot put two digits down here. I know the two goes here, and that one that I had to regroup goes up there. And I know one plus two is three, three plus three is six. So for round one, my score would be 62. Now, if I'm playing by myself, I can go ahead and go on to finish doing the same thing. Spin over here, write it down, spin over here, write it down, and then add them together. That's if I'm by myself, one through six. If I'm playing against someone, the only thing that's different is they will need their own sheet of paper like this, and they're going to record their score. So if my score for round one is 62, and their score for round one, let's pretend that it was 60, I would win one point. So whoever gets the highest number gets to circle it. And then at the end, you see who the winner is. Whoever has the most numbers circled, so whoever got the most highest numbers, is the winner. Now, because there are six, there could be a tie. So if there's a tie, you're going to want to make sure and do one extra problem for a tiebreaker. Okay, friends? So I hope you enjoy doing this activity, and I um, look forward to seeing a picture of this activity of your record sheet from your math notebook on Canvas. And I'll meet you back here tomorrow, friend.